how is it going, Jamie? Hey, streaming. How is it going? Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <sighs> is it supposed to rain? Uh, no. Uh, one of your, uh, one of the army guys are flying over. <laughs> uh, with the choppers? Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like a Blackhawk, though. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it looks more like a, something that's tactical. <laughs> Weird. I wonder where yeah. they're from. Probably New York. Uh, maybe out of drum? Probably, yeah. They've been doing a lot of training. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, first question for you, my friend. Yes, sir. Given the, situa given the situation, what would you prefer? A nice, cool office or standing out on the flight line, swinging your brains out? <laughs> Absolutely, flight line. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah, weather's I would, perfect. I would... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that you would say um, a nice, cool office. <laughs> oh, no. Once a grunt, always a grunt. You know, I get enough office time as a recruiter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true, true. But, um, oh, let's just see here. I'm like trying to research this. <laughs> now it's sideways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not going to work. Okay. Okay. But um, I don't have a couple people watching. But um, first of all, you grew up in Togo, yes. if I'm correct. Yes, yes. Yep. Um, when you were growing up there, this is kind of a two-part question. What was it like for you there? But also, did you ever think or imagine that you would be where you are now? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a deep question. Um, yeah. You know, growing up in Togo, it was beautiful. You know, the whole, when, when, they, when they say, you know, there's an African pro proverb that says it takes a village. And it really right. does. Yeah. Like, you know, if you mess up in school, the teachers are punishing you, and they are coming to your house, helping your parents punish you. Uh, <laughs> you disrespect, yeah. You disrespect anybody in the community. The whole community is making sure you don't repeat that again. Uh, the whole community looks after you. Uh, you know, there's nowhere that you go around where your neighbor doesn't know who you are, and it's a it's a very different lifestyle. Very beautiful, very peaceful, except in right. times. Um, but did I ever imagine that I'd be where I am today? Absolutely not. You know, it's a lot of people's dreams to just get to the U.S., you know, let, it, let alone be able to serve in the U.S. Air Force and be able to work on fighter jets, fly in one, and now be responsible for the next generation of people coming in. So I've been... You know, I have lived way beyond my wildest dreams that I had when I was in Togo. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, you also um, dance? Yes, sir. Do you prefer yeah. sir or ma'am? What? Uh, um, ma'am, if you don't mind. Ma'am? Okay. I always forget to ask. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. You know, I... I been misgendered throughout my entire life anyway so <laughs> yeah. but um oh what was i gonna ask you now um you are natural at dancing or um did you have to uh really uh work at it um, so I danced a lot of different styles. I grew up, so in Togo, 
most people here play video games. In Togo, we made beats, we made beats and we, made, we create dance steps. Uh, so I grew up dancing Afro beats and West African pop music. Um, salsa dancing is what I do professionally now. Back home, salsa dancing was more of a high society dance. So I mm. watched my parents dancing because they travel a lot. Um, I knew the very bas bas uh, basic steps until I went to UVM and I saw the team dance and I was my mind was blown. And then I joined the team. I started training. So I've been training professionally for the last 10 years now. That's um, good. That's, that's, I still do. And, and, and you have your own little dance troupe too. I, I train with... Um, um, well, my dance, is, my dance coach lives in New York City. I also dance with South Salina Dance Studio in Winooski, Vermont. So we have mm -hmm. our own little group and the UVM dance team that we coach. Right, right, right. Um, but um, how did you, you mentioned in one of your posts that you somehow got a scholarship from uh, Jerry Steinfeld? Mm-hmm, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, how 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 did you manage that? <laughs> so it was senior year of high school. Um, you know, senior year of high school was a little crazy for me. I was so amazed as to how many opportunities are out there, in because I never had that in Togo. So I had an internship at the Brooklyn Zoo because Steve Irvin fascinated me. Um, I, was, mm -hmm. I had a part-time job in Harlem, two hours away from where I lived. Um, I had an acting outreach, so I was training on Broadway. So when I sent out multiple applications for scholarships, I kept getting mm -hmm. denied. So one day right. I showed up to school and uh, my guidance counselor called me in and goes, hey, you have a meeting with the Seinfeld Family Foundation. This is a big deal. Go get a suit and tie, get ready. Uh-oh. You know, I'm not getting home until 7 p.m. How is that going to happen? Called my brother. My right. brother got me his old brown, ugly colored suit, you know, already. And I went, I didn't know who Jerry Seinfeld was, you know, because I didn't watch TV. I didn't know who he was. So I YouTubed him real quick. And I didn't really yeah. find him funny at first. You know, I just didn't understand his humor. So I showed up to the interview. He wasn't there. It was uh, mm -hmm. his brother-in-law or sister-in-law was there with the program manager so they asked me all these questions um i think the mo the one that stood out for me the most is how are you willing to pay it forward you know he's paying me to go to any school of my choosing and i told them well eventually i want to be able to change people's life one way or another i don't know specifically how that's going to be but i want to be able to say that you know what i've held this person make their dream come true i guess maybe that's where recruiting comes in but mm -hmm. i got to meet him alongside the other 99 people he was paying with and we got to joke one-on-one -on -one a little bit um, that's cool that's cool i was that's laughing cool. my butt off <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it's kind of uh interesting when you meet somebody that you've seen in TVs or movies and right. you actually meet them. You know, I had the experience of uh, meeting Christopher Reeves back in the uh, early 80s before his oh. uh, riding accident. Oh, no. Tall guy, tall guy, even with ice skates. Wow. You know, definitely over six feet. That's insane. But very, I can only, I can only wish. Nice, yeah, very nice guy, very approachable, you know. But... You know, that's the only famous person I really met besides running into and crossing paths was Bernie Sanders. <laughs> nice. I've seen him a few so. times uh, at the airport while I worked for Delta Airlines in Burlington. He always yeah. walked by yeah. and I wanted to scream, feel the burn, but <laughs> he wasn't professional. Well, um, I, when I was living in Burlington, this is after, uh, we left the service, mm -hmm. and Sanders was mayor of Burlington. So, you know, cross paths and all that. Um, a couple of times saw him in the pizza that was on Riverside Ave. Mm -hmm. 
And um, one evening, I was at this one church for a meeting, and I went to, I forget if I had to go use the bathroom or whatever, but on my way out, I literally ran into him. <laughs> right. I mean, it was like, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> Wish Merry you probably Christmas said something funny. Went, you know, wished, you know, wished a Merry Christmas and went on my way. Later on, I found out that he was Jewish. Um, <laughs> it's like, Happy Hanukkah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know. That's awesome. But, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's interesting how you meet different people over time. Right. But, um, you, and this is along the same post that you mentioned about Steinfeld, you said that you speak six languages. That's <laughs> correct. Yep. <laughs> um, what are they? Just so growing up, um, I think sometimes like the West like to call certain languages dialects and I recognize them as languages and I think that's very stupid. But um, so growing up, the tribe by on my on my on my mother's side were from the Ewe tribe. My dad comes from the mm -hmm. Gan tribe. Um, so I speak Ewe, I speak Gan, and with being colonized by the Germans, the French took over. We had English taking mm -hmm. side of Togo, a little bit of Belgium and Portuguese influence. Um, so we have a Creole of all of that mixed with all those languages called Mina. And then mm -hmm. French is the national business language once they took German away. So I never became fluent in German. Took two months of it. Uh, so Mina, Eve, Gan, French, had to learn English, and then I picked up Spanish while, while I lived in Brooklyn. It's more of a Dominican huh. Spanish, but it works. Yeah, yeah, kind, kind of like uh, French Canadian. Right. Tabarnak. <laughs> <laughs> it's all back to us. But, yeah. um, um, during, so far with the Air Guard, you've been in over 10 years? Uh, no, f about five and a half years now, close to. Oh, five yep. and a half. Okay, okay. And your rank is staff sergeant now, huh? Staff sergeant. It's moving fast. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, because I know some some people that have been in 20 years, and that's the highest that they've ever gotten. Really? Yeah. They probably just got comfortable. Could be, could be, but um, you went for aircraft maintenance to be a crew yeah, chief. Yeah, right? um, That was at Luke or Nellis. So it changed a bit. So initially, I was in Wichita, Wichita Falls, Texas, where you learned the fundamentals. Um, mm -hmm. And when I went through, it was the F-16s. Uh, so from there, I went down to Holoman Air Force Base in Alamogordo, New Mexico, to learn how mm -hmm. to safely launch and recover a live jet. And then from there, I came back and did some seasoning days uh, locally. But now most mm -hmm. people will go to either Luke or um, the base in Utah or Nellis. That's where we have the 35s now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, is it, uh, last year you guys uh, posted about the um, Vermont 35. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think most of that was filmed at Nellis. At some of them. Yeah. 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 But, um, since you've been... Um, been on a lot of different deployments, my guess is. I've been or on several. one. I've been on a few uh, TDYs. Yeah. Um, between both the deployment and the TDYs, what is your favorite place 
to go and not exactly your favorite place to go? Uh, uh, I'd say New Mexico, Alamogordo wasn't my favorite because the altitude was higher. Um, yeah. Sandstorms every day. You have to PT in that. and ugh. But we made it work. My favorite, though, was uh, um, Nellis because we got to – we got to work till Friday, and then we took the rest of the afternoon, and uh, the Vegas trip was right there. So we spent quite a few hours touring Vegas. Uh, we went, I mean, Kuwait was pretty cool, too, to see what the culture is up there, but Nellis was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I couldn't dance uh, in Kuwait. I could dance in Nellis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, Got to have some some fun so far, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely! It, it's not what I thought it was going to be. You know, it's a it's it's more. It's just like your everyday civilian job, you know, and with a lot more structure and rank that goes with mm -hmm. it. But the air guard is just the same local people that you work with. So it's definitely for yeah. me, it's a lot more fun than working at Delta Airlines. Yeah, yeah. Gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility and also different areas you can explore too. Indeed. Indeed. And I'm sure that that's what you tell your uh, perspectives also. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tell all my applicants. Uh, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, a few of them are starting to come back from their initial training, and that's the hardest part of joining that first year. And they were mm -hmm. telling me how they now see how brutally honest I was with them from the get-go, and mm -hmm. how they some of them wish they would have done it earlier, because uh, they they were having so much fun out there, even at boot camp. They, they, apparently, they were having fun, so it's pretty good <laughs> to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As compared to. Uh... Marine basic. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That's a different one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, where are your hopes right now? My hopes? Yeah. Um, right now, you know, with everything happening in the world, I hope that people use their brains more and understand how their communities work and, you know, talk to each other as opposed to just watching something on TV and getting all emotionally rattled up. I wish mm -hmm. most, pe most people, at least in Vermont, would open up and see what we do with the Vermont Air Guard and, you know, mm -hmm. let us educate the population on who we are instead of just right. thinking about the Jets all the time. Um, you know, I wish... Just us adults would do a better job by coaching our younger ones. Um, you know, knew somebody who just committed suicide a few days ago, and you know that's mm -hmm. why I posted that thing online. And I think we can do a better job. I see a lot of cyber bullying, people just bullying each other in the comments on Facebook and trying to be woke or whatever the word is. And I just hope that you know we can all just live in harmony. You know. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> Life is now. You know, we oh, either yeah. leave it now mm -hmm. or we're just wasting seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, um, thanks a lot for uh, having a little chat there, Freeman. I, and, I definitely uh, enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, you have a very nice evening. You as well, ma'am. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Yeah. yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.